Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coolum video and another Plugside chat. I just wanted to start this out by saying uh, thank you because this topic today and a few others that I want to talk about are really sort of coming from discussions and comments that you are leaving below and you know that's good for me so I know kind of what everyone is interested in talking about or discussing and it's you know, nice to have topics that we can all sort of explore together and just to keep this sort of progressing forward in terms of electric vehicles and electric vehicle adoption. And the thing that I wanted to talk about right now is, you know, when can we expect the NMC 811 batteries to actually start being released into production vehicles? And that's the nickel manganese cobalt batteries. And that 811 represents the ratio of nickel to manganese to cobalt. Right now, the batteries in the Bolt EV, the Kona Electric, the Nero EV, they're all 622, so uh, a higher ratio of manganese and cobalt to nickel. Manganese isn't a super valuable metal, but cobalt is, and it's one that has some concerning practices you know, when it comes to gathering and mining it and just cost of the battery and all sorts of other issues, you want to reduce the uh, cobalt as much as you can. But beyond that, 811 cells have additional benefits, higher energy density, faster charging, that sort of thing. The estimates that I've seen are that 811 cells would have an energy density of about 300 watt hours per kilogram. To give a comparison to that, the current cells, like I said, in the Bolt EV, the Nero EV, the Kona Electric, they're about 250 watt hours per kilogram. So it would provide a significant jump in a battery the size of the Bolt EVs. If you were to transition over to 811 cells, you'd be able to fit a 72 kilowatt hour battery pack in the same space volume and weight as the Bolt EV's current 60 kilowatt hour battery pack. So it would be a significant upgrade and it really shouldn't be limited to that 1C charging rate that we currently see right now. So who knows, maybe a full 2C or even possibly faster, which would allow the Bolt EV, the Kona Electric, the Nero EV, all of these newer EVs to be charging at about 150 kilowatts without many other changes being made. So all around, it's a very significant improvement. And the question is just when would we see these uh, hit the shelves? Like I said, when would we see them in production vehicles. For a while, I was wondering whether the new Nissan Leaf actually was using these 811 cells because it was refreshed in 2017 with a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. And then all of a sudden they release a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack in the same footprint in the same vehicle. I think they said a, maybe a four millimeter increase in battery case size. So the thought was, well, heck, are they already releasing it? Because those numbers would match up in the same size battery, you should be able to fit 60 kilowatt hour battery pack in a very similar amount of space as a 40 kilowatt hour battery pack. However, when you look at the actual weight of the vehicle, it looks like the 40 kilowatt hour battery pack Nissan Leaf is about 3,500 pounds. If you look at the Nissan Leaf E+, Plus, it's actually 3,780 pounds curb weight. So that's almost a 300 pound increase. And if you consider that weight increase, it means that more than likely Nissan didn't improve the energy density of the battery cells between the 40 kilowatt hour LEAF and the 62 kilowatt hour LEAF E+. More than likely what they were able to do is reformat the battery pack itself to fit the battery cells in there more densely so you could fit more energy into a given space, but you're not necessarily improving the energy density of the battery because the weight is gonna go up a similar amount. So it does seem like we're still at least a year away from the 811 cells. It would be really nice if maybe GM, when they refreshed the Bolt EV, were able to release it with 811 cells. And who knows, that's possible for the 2020 Bolt EV. We haven't heard really much about it yet, uh, but that would also align with Mary Barra's claims that they're moving toward these 300 mile 
EVs and a 72 kilowatt hour, or slightly, maybe slightly larger battery in the Bolt EV would bring it up pretty close to a 300 mile EV. And it would align with like the Barclays presentation where they laid out the batteries and they showed a very different battery format for the vehicles moving forward than the one that's currently being used in the Bolt EV. So I don't know, maybe we are only about a year away from seeing these 81cc cells hitting production vehicles. And I think personally that for passenger vehicles, small format, light duty vehicles, the 81cc cells do represent a bit of a tipping point because now all of a sudden you make basic sedans and small crossovers very capable of 300 miles of range on a charge. If you increase the charging rate to, like I said, a 2C charging rate, and especially if you can maintain that as an average charging rate up to about 80%, it takes away a lot of the concern the general populace has about traveling with electric vehicles, range anxiety, charging time anxiety, if you want to call it that. So I think it's going to be an all around win when we see it. And it would sort of bridge that gap to when we start seeing maybe some of these other battery technologies with 400, uh, 500, even 1000 watt hours per kilogram, if they actually do become a reality. Well, I think these cells would be a great bridge uh, for that gap. So if in the next two to three years, most of the vehicles are 811 cells, then I think that would be fine for increasing adoption while we sort of wait for that really breakthrough technology that would really just replace uh, internal combustion engine vehicles when it's released. Because if you're traveling 600 miles on a battery charge and you can recharge to full in 10 to 15 minutes, uh, there's really no need for gas at that point. So uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Have you heard any more about these 81cc cells? Uh, who do you think is going to be the first automaker to actually sell a vehicle using 811 uh, NMC cell technology? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And thank you for watching.